Yes, here's another recitation of the four rules. But there's also some in-depth explanation as well. For you new shooters in general, and clients of mine in specific, this video may be considered mandatory viewing prior to our first training session. For you veteran shooters that are looking for refresher training, no, you don't know the rules well enough. There are no do-overs, no resets, and no room for error. None. I beat these rules into my, all of my students and clients, no matter if it's their first time shooting or if they're a so-called veteran SWAT cop with all manner of salt on their black Velcro. I place this much emphasis on these rules with everyone every time because I want them all to know that they are that important to me all the time. They need to be that important to you no matter if you're about to breach a door with a team or if you've chosen to confront a home invader to protect your family. Bear with my rant and maybe, just maybe, you'll get why this is such a big deal. Oh, and following these rules will help you save a trip to the hospital, either as the passenger or the driver. Riley Schrader here with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I'm a retired cop and personal firearms trainer. I teach new and veteran shooters the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. Subscribe and ring the bell to get all the latest videos. These rules are purposefully, purposefully meant to be overlapping and redundant. One must violate two or more of these to enter a serious risk of injury to self or another. If these rules do not reliably become an unconscious habit of yours, no matter what your intentions may be, you're an accident waiting to happen. It's just varying degrees of badness. At the range, bad. At the house, cleaning your gun, bad. In the process of defending yourself with your firearm, astronomically worse because now if you shot yourself or a friendly you're much less likely to prevail over your attackers there are no do-overs you have to get this right every single time others have articulated these rules much more eloquently than I but here's my take Rule number one, all guns must be treated as if they're loaded all the time. Why? Because they're supposed to be loaded. They're no good for their intended purpose unless they are loaded. You expect your car to have gas in it and to start when you want it to because that's the intended purpose. You expect a power tool to spin up and do its task when you hit the switch because that's what it's designed to do. If you always treat your firearm as if it's ready to launch a bullet because that's what it's designed to do, then you will have the proper amount of caution that is needed. Rule number two, keep your finger off the trigger until you have the sights aligned on the target and you have decided to fire. This is a two-part rule. Trigger and the sights. The switch. Trigger. Makes it go. You don't want to make it go unless and until you have decided to make it go. And it's not just enough to have your finger off the trigger somewhere else. It needs to be touching something that is not the trigger and is away from the trigger itself. A physical reference point on the slide of a pistol is a good place to start with. It's a tactile reference point. For pistols, a point on the slide above the trigger guard is a good indexing position. Look for my video on trigger finger register and index positions for other firearms platforms 
to follow this up. Now, the sights. The sights don't have to be aligned with your eye to get a relatively accurate hit at close combat range. They just have to be aligned with the target that you have decided you want to hit. Number three, keep the muzzle. That would be the fiery death end part of the barrel pointed in a safe direction. Why? So you don't put a hole into something that would be irreversibly bad. What's a safe direction? Downrange. Sure, when you're at a range with a designated impact area, what about everywhere else? The, the house, office, parking lot, driveway, real life, etc. A working definition of safe direction may be any direction where there is no chance of personal injury, attackers that have crossed into the deadly threat category are excluded, and any direction where property damage would be limited or acceptable. Be mindful of the types of material that you're pointing your gun at, down, up, wherever. Will that surface contain, return, or allow a bullet to pass through and strike someone on the other side of it? You need to know these things. Number four, be sure of your target and what's beyond it. At the range, pretty straightforward. But do keep in mind that on outdoor ranges, wildlife can become quite habituated to the sound of gunfire and will wander onto an active range. You are almost universally prohibited from shooting critters on the range. Everywhere else, know the identity of that shadow in your kitchen before you start shooting. If you just turned on the lights or lit that shadow up, with your handheld flashlight and avoided shooting a family member, that's a win for you. If you're aware of the group of kids directly behind the bad guy that you're about to shoot, you may, you may have the opportunity to change your angle or even wait if the situation allows it. This one's really tough to preload, but that's why it's so very important for you to be able to process details like this and have good decision-making skills under stress. Number five, yes, I know I can't count, but this one needs to be included also. I'm pretty sure the Colonel took it for granted that a proper gun owner would do this as a matter of course, but this is now and that was then. Maintain control of your firearms at all times. Secure your firearm so that you have positive control over it, either on your person or in a secure environment where no unauthorized persons may gain access to it. Tactical reasons. If you want to have access in case of an emergency, you need to be able to get to your gun. Strategic. You don't want to have too many obstacles to overcome so that you can have access to your firearm in case of that emergency. And now let's talk about penal codes for a second. As if we don't have enough micromanagement of our lives by government already, there are laws on the books that criminalize unlawful storage. Check your local listings. So there you go. Thanks for staying with my rant. Check out my other videos on the DFI channel. I post new videos every week. They'll get you started on some of your training. And feel free to comment below if you have questions or if you need clarification, I will get back to you. Click the like and subscribe buttons to stay updated on DFI videos and remember to ring the notification bell to stay on top of new videos. Share this video with people in your tribe. Help educate them too. Visit DFISoCal.com to find out when and where the next self-defense laws class will be scheduled in the Southern California area. Take a look at my IG channel to see what I'm currently working on. The links are in the description. To schedule your personal firearms training session with me or to develop an ongoing training program, contact me at Riley at DFISoCal.com. There's lots more information coming. I'm Riley Schrader. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time with Defensive Firearms Instruction.